Good afternoon and welcome to my daily broadcast. Um, my name is Barry Selby. Actually, before I jump into that, let me introduce the topic and then I'll introduce myself. Um, this is episode number 470 and the topic today is When Love Isn't Enough. Subtitle, Let's Go Deep. As I said at the beginning, my name is Barry Selby. Now introduce myself. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert and help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. And I do these talks every day called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. Excuse me, Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart, because usually it's for women. Um, and this is number 470, so every day has a lot of talks. And the topic today, as I mentioned, is when love isn't enough. And let's go deep. And I'm actually going to play with this because truth is love is enough, but not in the con- you may not get it from the context to like, explain what I mean. I think. So thanks for being with me. If you're here for the first time, I usually go live at 5 p.m. Pacific time on Facebook Live first, then I repurpose it onto YouTube and onto my podcast, which I'll tell you about the links at the end of the broadcast. And if you're here, thanks for being here. And I welcome your comments and interaction in the broadcast. And if you want to share this out, feel free to do so. And if you have any questions you want to share in the broadcast, I'll respond live. And if you do them in the replay, I'll respond in the comments afterwards. So you get to meet both ways. <laughs> so the topic. And when love isn't enough, or when love is not enough, or how you want to say that. What inspired this actually was a conversation with my coach a little bit earlier, um, because of the context of what's been happening around our book. And I've talked about this a while ago, but I'm in the, I'm in the throes now, massively so, of updating the book and refining, polishing, editing to make it perfect, because we're launching in a couple of weeks, finally, the right way. And we've been through quite a journey the last month, month and a bit, because it, it was supposed to come out a month ago, roughly. Um, I'm going to say this in a nice way. You know I've talked about self-love. I've talked about it quite a lot recently and I've done, I've promoted it off of, the, off of the link and everything else. I'll put the link in the comments at the end as well so you can find it. But often I realized, and I was talking about this a couple of days ago, that my own self-love has been having some, it's been having a workout, <laughs> to say a bit lightly, because of all the stuff that's come up. And I'm going to apply this to relationships so it helps you if you're looking for that conversation too. But in the context of what's been happening with our book, the interpersonal challenges we've been having because of the... I'm I'm being careful I frame this because I'm to keep this clean and not get into a lot of um, slander (laughs) or risking that. But basically the other person involved in in getting the book done became a roadblock, simply as that. They weren't responding, they weren't supporting us, and they were basically putting our book in jeopardy because it wasn't right. And that's one reason we're fixing the book now is to make it readable and correct without the typos. So self-love helps, but it isn't enough in this context. And I'll give you some pieces to add to this. So self-love is a tool that is powerful to bring you back to yourself. And, I'm going to say and, not but, and there's more to it. I'm going to speak to a couple of these big heavyweight topics like the F word, forgiveness, not something else. And also... Um, I hope it this way. The evolution of love has a lot of context to it. And I want to give you this idea that, well, I want to suggest to you the idea that love is a, <laughs> that's the word that comes up, lubricant for many other things in your life. And in relationships especially, it can be challenging to be in a relationship when you are up against it, whatever that it is. Um, actually, reading a friend of mine, Brian's post, actually it's an old post that was shared by a friend of mine today, talking about how choosing into love and choosing into a relationship it's so tempting to keep thinking it's out there somewhere. It's like, not this one, it'll be with the next person. It'll be over there, it won't be here. And that's a, that's a challenge because we have this bad habit as people, human beings, men and women, I would suggest, that self-love is a, um, an absent practice so that when we're out in a relationship, we don't feel fulfilled in the relationship. So we're looking for something else outside the relationship. So who we're with is not good enough. There's somebody better over there. I suggest, I offer, I invite you to think about the fact that self-love is the foundation. Self-love is the platform upon which you can create a healthy relationship with yourself first and then with your partner. But then when stuff comes up, you need to bring in some other tools. And that's what I'm going to talk about now. Because you know I talk about self-love a lot. It's a foundation for a relationship. And again, I'll put the link in at the end. But the thing I want to make sure you get this point is that stuff happens in relationships, be it personal relationships, romantic relationships, business relationships, anywhere, 
stuff comes in, stuff happens, stuff challenges us. We get rubbed the wrong way. We get upset. All these things happen to us. Unless you're a Zen master, most of us as human beings face our upsets. The opportunity that comes up though is not to react or be a victim of them. Yes, victim is the word I used. Because we have a tendency as human beings to be run by our um, stuff, baggage, emotions, upsets, conditioning that has us react to things a certain way. And when we are truly aligned to our true values, when we are aligned to our hearts, and when we take a chance to breathe and be present to ourselves, then the reactive nature doesn't necessarily have to happen. In fact, it doesn't happen because we're not um, on a hair trigger. If you look at your past relationships and past interactions with people in general, maybe it's somebody in traffic, even because that's usually a good, when you're driving in traffic, it's usually the most prone place you have the reaction. Notice how so trigger response you were, how reactionary you were to things that happened, sometimes out of proportion to what happened. That's a clue. And this is the thing I want to give you some hints on, is we get clues all the time in our interactions with other people, be they romantic or personal, social, business, or any of those things. We get clues, we get insights, but we ignore them. And we think it's going to be fine. Or we're going to hold our upset and grudge because we feel we're in the wrong. And this is the challenge of being in upset with somebody. When we feel like we're being hard done by, when we feel like we've been wronged by somebody, we tend to fall into the trap of blame that they're at fault, so they've got to fix it to make us feel better. You know the feeling? And I've talked about this before a lot, because that paradigm where you're upset with somebody else and they have to fix it to make you feel better gives them the power over you. Sorry, something in my teeth keeps catching me, so I'm pulling it out. That piece right there, if you understand that and you change it, could be the biggest key to freedom you've ever had. To really get clear that it's not up to them to make you feel good. Whoever them is, again, relationship partner, business partner, coach, whoever it is, when you realize it's not up to them to fix you, when you realize it's not their role and it's not your need to have them do anything for you to make you feel okay, is when you can change things. This is, this is one of the biggest lessons I learned years ago when I was in my master's program, discovering how by, by thinking that I was being resentful of somebody else, somehow I was being righteous and I was going to be fine. But the truth was what I was doing was actually giving them my power. There's a quote that's been attributed to... Um, who was it attributed to? It wasn't Santiana. I'll look up the quote. I'll, I'll remember who it was. I'll, I'll, remember, I'll say it. But the quote is basically is, is about the definition of resentment. It's taking poison expecting the other person to die. Now think about that for a second. The, the metaphor for poison because it is toxic to you. It's taking poison, expecting the other person to die. That is the um, framework of how codependence really works in a negative way. When you blame somebody else for something that they did to you, now, I'm not saying you could excuse them, and I'll get to that in a minute, and you are basically blaming and judging them the whole time, what you're doing is making your own system toxic because they, they don't give a damn what's coming on, they don't care. But the truth is, what's happening is you have somehow got it wired inside yourself that it's their responsibility because it's their fault to fix things. And you will not stop being upset until they fix it. And that's like, what are you thinking? You're putting your life on hold for them to solve your problem. And only then you're going to feel okay? Do you realize how silly that sounds? That's the trap you fall into when you live in resentment. It's also the trap you fall into when you learn that, when you don't learn rather, that you have the power, that you have the freedom. This is a big piece of the puzzle for a lot of people in relationship challenges, especially when it's divorce or breakup or post-relationship, is you carry these resentments around, again, the poison expecting the other person to die, for months, for years in this paradigm where you're feeling somehow that it's their fault and so they've got to fix it and you're going to feel resentful for years. It's making you sick, emotionally and physically. So you might want to change it, which leads me to the next piece. Again, self-love is the foundation but we get caught up in this trap of blaming other people and we somehow think it's their responsibility. If you love yourself enough, back to the first part, 
you can become whole enough that you don't use other people as your scapegoats or as your saviors because it's either one scapegoat or savior is how they work the next piece because resentment is one of these big pieces of the puzzle is there because you're in massive judgment and judgment is one of these wonderful things that we have in the world to remind us of the fact that we're not loving <laughs> simply put judgment is the thing we do to separate ourselves from ourselves and other people self-judgment judgment of others and the way to get through that with love as a call as a piece of it is a little thing as i said earlier called the f word which is forgiveness forgiveness is a tool and again same as you don't um give the other person responsibility to make you feel better you also don't forgive them either this is going to sound really weird but trust me on this forgiveness is what you do to heal yourself of the upset you're carrying inside yourself it's like the solution or the antidote to the poison you've been taking is resentment forgiveness is your useful get out of pain tool to have you be free and be whole and be healthy again this is powerful stuff by the way so forgiveness as a self-applied tool which you can do will change your life because you'll no longer be in this ping pong match of being at, re at reaction to or at, or at um at the beck and call of other people's upset you won't or rather you won't get a beck and call of other people because you're upset when you forgive you are free forgiveness is a key to freedom not to victimhood because some people look at forgiveness saying well if i forgive i'm gonna be a victim no it's the not forgiving that makes you a victim let's get that straight game changer there's another piece i want to bring in that hasn't shown up yet so i'm going to do this as a part two so self-love and forgiveness are two powerful pieces of the puzzle to learn how to have autonomy in yourself to remove the paradigm of victimhood from other people and also how when you carry upsets about other people you, they don't have control over you oh that was the other piece so i said earlier that in this paradigm they're not letting the other people off the hook this is the thing when you're in vitriol and upset about somebody else the odds of them coming back to fix the problem they caused is very slim in fact there's a whole divorce attorney legal money-making system out there because of this when you come to a place of forgiveness and own your own space and come back to wholeness again and you release the judgment you're carrying inside you can approach them from a place of sensitiveness now again there's no guarantee they're going to change because of what happened but the odds are slightly more in your favor than they were before so if you come to them with upset angst and hurt feelings and judgment and blaming them and they don't respond you get more upset so again they're controlling your upset it's going to be a little different if you come to them saying, look, this isn't work, we need to fix this. How can we work together to resolve this? Now, if they don't step into that, then maybe there's legal action. Maybe there's some other paradigm to take action steps to get it resolved. But the thing about it is, whether or not they respond to you or not, is their crap, not yours. You don't need to carry the pain all the time. Yes, you may want to feel righteous for a bit, and if they get you off, go for it for a minute but don't hold on to it because that paradigm puts you again in the place where you're feeling hard done by you're the suffering one because of what they ask for it isn't healthy again back to self-love self-love really is one of the keys i mean i sort of make that talk that title is a false one in a way because love really is the, is the cure but it comes through forgiveness self-love and a few other things that i'm yet to bring forward which i haven't written out yet <laughs> i've been making some notes for um well i'll let you know now in a couple of weeks, I'm going to do a webinar um, on this topic in a deeper level. I want to just start throwing some ideas out now just to give you some tasters of what's coming. So hopefully this will make some sense to you. This is the beginning of something much bigger, but I want to make sure you get the keys. So again, at the end, I'll put the links in for the self-love practice. In fact, I'll do this as well because it's talking about forgiveness. I have a self-love uh, worksheet I'll include in the comments. The link to that in my comments too, so you know both of those. Um, there's not pieces out there, but it's not. It's, it's it's refusing to come in, so I may have to wrap up at this point because it's not showing up. Thank you, thank you, Vanessa. Nice to see you my broadcast, and you're welcome. Um, unconditional self, unconditional self, live, <laughs> unconditional self, love, Anthony. <laughs> I think you had a typo or your autocorrect did something weird there. Um, so this stuff is big, and if you catch the broadcast late, please watch from the beginning. There's some big um, keys to living life healthy in a healthy and successful way that you might want to take on. Um, okay, so links and then, then the Wink Farmer broadcast. 
So I'll put in the comments afterwards the links to what I was talking about, but I'll give the verbal one now for two of the ones I want to talk about. One is the self-love practice I mentioned, which is an, on my website, and my social media is my name, so Barry Selby is the way to find me. Website is barryselby.com forward slash self-love, or one word for the self-love practice. Easy way to get your life transformed and it's cheap. So get in there, take a look. It's two audio practices and a guide, and a guide that will change your life. Take a look, start with that, it will change your life, definitely. If you want to go deeper and have a conversation about what's in the way and what you want to, how I can help you get through it, go to barryselby.com forward slash chat to have a chat with me. Sounds simple enough. Um, you go there, you get on my calendar, and you can fill out the form, and we start from there. I will put in the link, because I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, for the forgiveness worksheet. That'll be in there as well after I sign off. And as a wrap-up, again, this is my Facebook Live first. It goes onto my YouTube channel, then onto my podcast. So the links, so you know where they are. On my Facebook, I po do them on my personal page and then post them to my business page, which is barryselby.author. I then put them onto my YouTube channel, and I put them on a place on Facebook too. But on my YouTube channel, which is uh, Barry Selby, is the user and messages from the masculine is the playlist. And also onto my podcast, which is on iTunes, which is um, messages from the masculine is the podcast. You can subscribe and download my broadcast there, the, the audio format of these. And uh, I think that's it. I'm back in tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time, I think. Um, this week's been a bit uneven, but uh, I want to make sure I get on there to do it today. I appreciate you being with me. And again, if you're missing the, the beginning of the broadcast, watch from the beginning. If you have any questions or comments, I'll respond after I sign off. If you know anybody should watch this, please share it with them. Your homework. Yes, I'm giving homework for a while. Your homework, if you so choose, is to reflect on your past week. This is a Friday broadcast. And see where you've got some resentments and upset feelings about other people. Then go to my website. Get the self-love practice, download the forgiveness worksheet, and do them. It'll make your life, your work, your reef, make your week a lot better, and it'll change your life for the better. Close enough. <laughs> Thanks for watching. As always, I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves, and uh, enjoy your evening. Bye.